Welcome to the Marie Manucherry podcast. Over the last 30 years, it has been my joy to assist humanity in aligning with their magnificence so they may heal, discover their natural gifts, and communicate with loved ones living on the other side. May you also experience delight while we dance in the powerful, intuitive world of energy. Let's get going. Hello and welcome to our Energy Meets the Divine. I'm very excited we get to hang out together again. Before I go to the phone lines and start answering questions, I thought I would talk about energy medicine and how you can use it even if you've never taken a class before. So there are hundreds of what we call modalities about how to move energy in the body. My favorite is Reiki. I studied that many moons ago, and I still use it every single day in any session that I use or sometimes when I'm teaching. Um, it's my favorite. I teach it once a year as well. But there are many, many modalities. But here's the truth of it, is that our hands are meant to help ourselves and others heal. In fact, if we were all sitting down and watching a bunch of kids roller skating or on their scooter, or if all of us were on our scooters in a cola sack and someone fell down and everybody would come over to help them, we most likely put our hands near their roof like, oh, are you okay? And we put our hands on their shoulder. We hug people when they're having a hard time. So in the palm of each one of your hands is a medium-sized chakra. And this is the only place in the body where you're going to discover a medium-sized chakra. The chakras that run through the center of the body are mm, about two and a half inches in diameter. The circle part is, which uh, is close to the top of your chest or your skin. Several chakras extend out, but so seven chakras are about two and a half inches in diameter. These are a little bit smaller inside the uh, of the palm of your hand. And then you have 3000 minor chakras that line up in joints they make up the meridian lines and the acupressure points. Lots of chakras. So these beautiful chakras inside the palms of your hands, all you have to do really is just lay hands on yourself or someone else. If you're having a hard time, you've got a stomach ache, a headache, someone doesn't feel good. I've actually helped one of my daughters go into labor by doing energy work so she didn't have to be induced. <laughs> so let's say that you have a headache and you want it to go away and you're open to taking some Tylenol, but you're going to try some energy work first. So the first thing you want to do is rub your hands together because we're just going to energetically wash our hands. We're just removing any stagnation. Plus it feels really good just to warm up your hands. <sighs> nice and warm. Whenever it feels good, everything's about, if it feels good, move on. So this feels pretty good. And as you're raising your hands to put your hands on your head, or maybe as you're moving to put your hands on someone else's head, if someone that you know has the headache, I want you to be mindful of feeling the energy around you. Just start to fo focus on and learn to focus on subatomic particles, things that are moving all around you that we don't typically see with our human eyes. And you might even want to stop a few inches above the head. Let's say, you know, we're focusing on a headache um, just to feel the energy and, and kind of preparing your body to accept energy or letting your body know, help is on its way, we're coming. And then go ahead and place the hands on the head and let them just rest there. Now, when you're moving energy, it's important to not allow your mind to go into negative thinking. You don't wanna be stressed, you don't wanna be anxious, you wanna be in high frequency. You basically don't want to think. You, you want the mind to be quiet so as much subatomic particles can come in and actually start to affect the area. And certain, certain things cause different problems. So someone with a headache might be dehydrated. They just might be super, super tired. So even though if you have your hands on their head, if you're quieting your mind or focusing on things in the present moment that bring you joy, like lovely art or wind, if you happen to be outside or the sound of birds or just the feeling of a warm, delicious kitchen in a fall afternoon. If you can focus on something that brings you wonderful happiness, that's going to help your brain to relax. And then the body can start to do its own healing. All bodies heal itself. All bodies heal itself, themselves, their selves itself. <laughs> 
um, and we're providing opportunities. So let's say someone has a headache, but you've got your hands close to their head or on top of their head, whatever feels the most comfortable. I think touch is important. I don't think humans get enough positive touch personally. Uh, and so if the, if the issue is really dehydration, you're actually going to help the body to find stores of moisture within it and help the person to then go drink the adequate amount of water. So, because the energy work could wipe out the headache just like that, but maybe they still need to have hydration to keep it away. So they'll move into some sort of balance or you, if you're working on yourself, will move into some sort of balance where your body will just go take a nap or go drink some water or whatever it needs. But I thought it would be fun for you to know that you don't have to go out in the world unless it brings you great joy and study a modality. You already have healing chakras in the palms of your hands and the heart chakra in the chest, which is about unconditional love. It's called universal life force. All right. Yeah. Uh, universal love and universal life force here. The, these beautiful medium sized chakras are attached to the heart chakra. So we're really healing from our heart, but not out of worry. This is where some people who work in the healing world make it perhaps more challenging because they're worried. They want that person to get better and you have to realign yourself out of anxiety or fear or worry often as you lay hands on yourself or someone else. So you can bring in pure energy. That's not in some weird emotional frequency. That's not very helpful. Anyway, I thought that might be something fun that you could try this weekend. And now I'm going to go ahead and go to the phone lines. Hi, Marie. My name is Robert. I'm calling from South Carolina. The question I have for you is I wanted to see if you can just do a general energy reading on me. I'm curious what kind of things you might see in that. For one thing, I've wondered if there might be what some people have termed a familiar spirit or some sort of energy that has attached itself to me. There are various repeating patterns in my life that kind of make me wonder if there's another influence that might be at work there. So I'm very curious what you would see if you're able to take a look at that. Again, thank you very much for offering this service. You're welcome, Robert. And we hope that you're safe and you're part of the world. We've had some floodings in the US and Southern parts of the United States some pretty significant ones actually. Um, so interesting enough, entities, which I kind of think is what you're talking about, can't really connect to humans who are grounded and grounded means to be present. Not a lot of analyzing, a lot of, not a lot of processing, and we don't have to be present 24 seven, but we need to have significant moments throughout the day where we are present. Plus life is just a million times happier if we're in the authentic present moment. And you do have a large leak in your first chakra. So it is possible that you, I don't see an entity attached to you. I rarely see that with the people that I work with because most people are more aware, um, those that I work with and, uh, and do things like meditate and take good care of themselves and eat well. So I don't see anything attached to you, but I, when I look outside of your aura, I do see a little bit of mischievous energy. It's, it's not in your auric field. It's kind of outside your auric field. And this is probably coming ab about because you're somehow welcoming it. I think you have a mischievous side to you. And I think it's, it's kind of like playing with, this is a weird analogy, <laughs> but sometimes uh, people who, uh, women, if you will, or people who identify as female who are heterosexual tend to have a percentage, a small per be attracted to like what we call, you know, the bad guy, you know, not a great person. And, and maybe the female is an honest individual and has great integrity, but she's somehow attracted to the bad guy. You know, the guy who doesn't really care about her is not really interested in any relationship, but she, for some weird reason, will be attracted to him. And that's how I kind of feel like you are with, you know, the multi-sensory world, not in a large way, but almost as if you're anticipating that there's darkness out there and that's going to come and glue itself to your auric field. And I don't even see it glued. I just see it kind of playing hide and go seek with you. And this kind of energy is just mischievous. It, it can't really create huge problems, but it's like people who constantly think negatively, they wonder why their life doesn't move in a positive direction, but it kind of can't. If, if a lot of their particle mass is vibrating in low frequency, 
and all the stuff they want is in high vibration, they're not in alignment to allow that stuff to come into their life. So it's almost like you've got to say goodbye to the bad boy kind of energy and realize that you are worthy and deserving of all the happiness and kindness and love that is out there in the world and around us. And that's really the recipe for the example that I gave too, when people believe that they're worthy and deserving, they attract healthier, kinder, more honest, more loving individuals into their life and experiences. So it's like, you've got to just wipe that away. Like it's not a problem. It can't hurt you, but let's not go wondering where is it? Where is it? Cause in a way you're kind of attracting it. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Interesting question for sure. Hello, Marie. I am Michaela from Bern, the capital of Switzerland. I'm following your podcast and thank you so much for this format. It's really great. So I'm recording this message, hoping that it will get to you. My question is related to wealth. Um, I'm a single mom and I'm struggling from paycheck to paycheck. And um, I was wondering if you could tell me what you see or what you get energetically when you listen to me. Um, yeah, what does the universe have in store for me? Um, how can I have more wealth, have more money, attract more money into my life so that me and my son can live a more abundant and fulfilling life? Uh, I'm so curious to know about it. And thank you so much for answering my question. All the best to you. You're such a lovely person. I love your pets. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. This is a really easy answer, in my opinion. And this is for everyone in the world. We're all meant to be wealthy and happy. Financially free is really the phrase we're looking for. Everyone deserves to have financial freedom. And it can look different for, for different people. Some people don't care so much about luxury and are very happy living more of a simplistic lifetime and maybe just having a tons of money and saving and then also freedom to go travel or whatever they want. And some people want more luxuries and all the other things too. But, so it doesn't really matter what one desires. Everyone is meant to have authentic desires and to have financial freedom is actually a wonderful desire. But what you'll have to do, and I have said this more times than I can count, I think on this podcast, when you think about money, before you engage with wealth, before you connect to your online banking, before you pull your card out of your wallet, before you touch your wallet, before you write a check, before you hold mail that's financial in nature, you will need to change your personal energy to be in high frequency. And everyone's kind of unique about what makes them so happy. And it can't be people. It can't even be pets because people disappoint us from time to time and our pets get sick or scratch furniture or poop on something. And, and so we have kind of these mixed energies when it comes to our relationships. So you can't pick kids, pets, but you can pick other things like light, flowers, color, mountains, smells, something of that nature. And yours is kind of hard for me to read, Michelle, because if you do not keep your energy up high enough, I understand you're a single mother, so I know you're really, really busy. I was a single mom when my kids were teenagers and I, it was a crazy time, but I worked from home. So that was helpful. That was ex extremely helpful. But I think yours might be aromas, like smells, like really delicious food cooking in the kitchen or bread in the oven. Could even be um, the smell of lemon, like fresh grated lemon. So if that's true for you, then your job before you engage with wealth is to first start to think and feel and smell these, this recommendation that I have for you. And once you're in that space, then engage. So let's say you're about to look at your online banking and you're going to go, oh yeah, I got to smell lemons, maybe some spaghetti, some bread in the oven first, because it's going to raise your vibration. And then you can put your passport in and then keep going back to this formula the whole time you're engaging with wealth. And this is a life long exercise, lifelong exercise. It truly is the secret for financial freedom for humanity because it's really about our relationship with wealth. And when we're in high frequency, happy feelings that aren't related to wealth, as we engage with wealth, we sweeten the pot of the relationship. Just like if 
every, in, let's say you had your family over for the holidays and everybody was in a really good mood. Everyone would have so much fun. Weird stuff wouldn't happen. People wouldn't bring up past stories that are embarrassing or low vibration because everyone at the party is in a good space. Maybe it's snowing outside and everyone loves snow. And so all of a sudden the party becomes really beautiful. So, so people don't always know like, oh my gosh, you know, we've had the last five Christmases and they were terrible. And this one, for some reason this year, it was so great. Well, because something influenced the energy of the people at the party that allowed them to have a wonderful time. So we want to influence our energy when we connect with wealth or even before, even before. Okay. Have fun. Good luck. Hi, Marie. This is Kerry from Australia. Love your show. Uh, my question today is I'm currently a school counsellor and whilst I love counselling and helping kids and teenagers, I feel like there could be something more yeah. that I'm kind of called to do. But I'm just yeah. wondering if you could tap in today just to see if you could think of any strengths that you can feel I do. I um, do. of mine. Um because I guess I'm just after future direction of yeah, what sort of job or career or for you to tap yeah. into those as well. Uh, thanks again. Okay. Bye. You're welcome, Carrie. And I, th I think I said this same suggestion to someone else recently, study astrology. It let's say for some reason, astrology isn't ultimately the thing. If that's the case, it will get you to the thing, but I think you should study astrology. You are, truly interested in people. And astrology is kind of a psychology look into someone. I've used it many times to help with my own inner work. I think astrology is very powerful from a really good, aware, intuitive astrologer. Um, so I think you should consider studying astrology. I think you're going to like it a lot. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Marie. My name is Blossom and I come from the Sunbelt States on the West Coast. Um, I think you have the coolest gig on this planet <laughs> and the happiness that it brings you radiates through you. Thank you. My question today is, um, I have a lot of issues with relationships with people and I, mm. and I know that this lifetime, this reincarnation is meant for me to work on those. I just don't know where to start. Um, I don't think I have a single authentic relationship mm. with family or friends there's nobody who really gets me or understands me or knows me. It's almost like I have some form of social autism. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I don't go in trying to sabotage uh, a relationship, but it ends up that way. And so I need to understand what is it that's causing this difficulty in this lifetime or even in past lifetimes. And how is it that I can work through it? And the other question I have is about my second chakra. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had a lifelong disability medical issue with it, and it's brought me a lot of sadness and I'd like to know what kind of solutions I can find to get over it, to get past it, to be happy with what I have in this lifetime. Right. Um, any kind of advice, any kind of direction would be great. I listen to your podcasts regularly and I will continue listening to them until eternity. <laughs> um, so if you can read my aura, if you can read my energy and give me some pointers that make both these areas of my life better, that would be great. Thank you so much. And I look forward to you responding to my voicemail. Take you're, care. Bye -bye. You're, <laughs> you're welcome, Blossom. So the second chakra, and I'm sorry for the health issues, the chronic ones that you've had in that part of your body. The second chakra's emotional component is joy. You cannot wait until your life is joyful in order to allow yourself to feel joy. You have to learn how to be joyful every day, no matter what. And, and it is, there is work involved because there are weird things that happen personally to humans and globally to the human race that can make a human lower their frequency and not be in joy. But you have to catch yourself at some point during the day. You can't just maintain your frequency because that's really kind of a victimization, which is a pretty low vibration. Victimization is pretty low. In fact, when people are trying to manifest something in their life and they've been working on it for a long time and it hasn't worked, chances are they are stuck in a form of victimization. And victimization is going to have logical 
reasons why we're in that state, just like having this health issue. Like, well, how can I be happy until this health issue is resolved? How am I going to feel joy? It's kind of an oxymoron. It's this weird thing. But the truth is, is that vibration is what changes things. So if you don't change your energy, it's going to be difficult to change the situation or the experience. And now I'm trying to remember your first question. Oh, relationships. Yeah. So relationships are part of the second chakra. The second chakra, along with governing all the organs, you know, reproductive, kidneys, adrenal glands, lower back, appendix. I think that's all of them. Uh, it also governs key areas of human existence and no other chakra governs these key areas. It's the only chakra that governs these key areas. Career, wealth, intimate partnership, close personal friends and creativity. So all of this is related to your second chakra, all of this. So creating joy authentically, not waiting till things change in your life to have joy, but finding things that can bring you personal joy, what is, which is going to be your work, will help you to resolve all of these things. I do think falling in love with yourself is going to be significant, which is an emotional relationship. People can only love us to the level we love ourselves. So that's important. And I, I don't think that you, you know, sabotage these relationships. I think you still attract, you know, younger souls in your life. And it's challenging when you're a medium soul or an older soul person and you have younger souls in your life because younger souls are never going to understand an older soul or the concepts that older souls live within or believe in. It, it's impossible. It's like, you know, trying to have a, you're a 50 year old person. I, I know you're not 50 years of age, but you're a 50 year old person and you're trying to have a best relationship with someone who's seven. It can't happen. The seven year old is never going to understand what some of the experience the 50 year old has gone through. So you can be friends and you can have fun, but there can't be this deep bond and intimate connection of friendship. It just can't happen. So that's part of your problem. That's part of it. And, and how I knew that that was uh, part of the issue is I had this memory. Intuition sometimes will just give you memories of your own life to give you answers. And I had this memory when I was somewhat newly married, maybe the first five years of marriage. And I really thought that I just didn't know what I was talking about. I would tell people in our circle, we had a large social circle, what I thought they were feeling, not to like a, do an intuitive reading. I had no idea I was going to be an intuitive thought hadn't even crossed my mind, but kind of to comfort them. And I would say 99% of the people that I had relationships with were completely detached from their emotions. They had no idea what they were feeling. And so they were, you know, they were very polite, but kind of off putted by my comments. And then I would feel like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I'm doing. What's wrong with me? <laughs> you know? And as you know, I continued through that relationship, that marriage, and I started to become more aware and conscious, I realized that the majority, if not all of the people I was socializing with just were in a different you know, belief system than I was in a different vibration. We were different soul levels, right? So you can't have those deep intimacies with people who are younger souls than you, but you have to fall in love with you so you can let people love you too and attract the higher vibrational people into your life or older soul type people. So I think that's what will help you. Hi, Marie. This is Christy calling to see if I could get a medical intuitive reading from you. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes about four years ago. And I was wondering if there was some sort of emotional or physical reason that this just came about in my life when I was, you know, 36 yeah. years old. Yeah. Um, it's well managed and I'm really healthy otherwise. I was wondering if there is a way that I can talk to my beta cells and my islet cells and <laughs> the my islets. pancreas and yeah. tell them to see if we can get back to work and produce <laughs> insulin. Um, uh, I'd love to know if there's anything else medically that you could tell me about my body that you feel. Um, thank you so much. I love your show and I love everything you do. Oh, thank you, Christy. And 
Yeah, I, I, I can only imagine. I have been at the bedside of patients who were your age or um, you know, in their 40s or whatnot, and were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes because typically it's a childhood diagnosis or teenage um, years, but we do have adults on the planet that may be the islands of Langerhorn. Uh, islets of Langerhorn, excuse me, the cells within the pancreas. Maybe there weren't, weren't as many of them, or maybe they were slightly weak, but not so much so that they develop type 1 diabetes in childhood. And then sometimes what happens is what the belief is in modern medicine, and it seems feasible to me, that a virus comes across, you know, and someone may not even be aware of the virus, or maybe it was a cold you had months ago or a year ago, and it weakened the cellular activity within the pancreas and died off enough of the islets of Langerhorn that then now you have to wear an insulin pump and um, watch your diet and exercise appropriately and all of those things. And congratulations for having it well managed. I think that's amazing. But there are reasons why people develop diabetes, type 1 and type 2. But what I'm about to say is more type 1, because um, it's so significant where people can recover from type two, but we don't have a lot of medical history of people covering from recovering from type one. So when someone is choosing, and I'm not saying you chose this or not because it didn't happen in childhood, but we know that there was potential prudency of creating uh, type one diabetes. People who have type one diabetes want to learn from a soul's perspective to pay attention to their own body. So they maybe have had a lot of lifetimes where they didn't have a physical form or they've had lifetimes where they didn't pay attention to their physical body and ran it ragged or hurt it in some way. I'm having these weird pictures in my head right now, uh, not personal. <laughs> I mean, like they're not related to my personal life, but I'm seeing a picture of a priest flagging himself you know, so whipping himself and cutting himself and hurting himself. So I'm going to take that as some pictures of some previous lifetimes that you've had where you were devoted to Catholicism and the self-infliction of pain in order to be, to have a healthy relationship with God. Fascinating, right? Um, so if you're going to talk to the Islets of Langerhorn, I would talk to them about that. Um, you know that you are worthy and deserving and that you are enjoying watching your body be healthy and happy and loving it. That would be interesting to see if we can get more um, cellular activity in your pancreas because of this past life aspect that I just saw. So I, th I think there was more than one lifetime where you devoted your life to, it may not have always been Catholicism, but some sort of significant religious organization as a priest, a minister, a nun. Um, yeah, that's what I think. So you're doing everything great. You're very fortunate. You're very lucky. You're healthy and you will remain healthy. That's what I see anyway. Okay. Thank you. Hello. My name is Zendra Hansley. I'm located in the sunny state of Florida, Jacksonville, Florida. I'm grateful to be able to um, do this recording to get the guidance of Miss Marie on my health question and how do I um, address it? from an energy standpoint, from a um, even vitamin standpoint, any recommendations mm. there, I'm totally open to that. Mm. Um, I'm open to any guidance that you may have on, on my health question. Mm. In January, 2024, uh, at rest, mainly in the middle of the night at times, yeah. I would start to feel yeah. um, tachycardia mm -hmm. um, where my heart rate would just kind of shoot up at rest to 136, right. um, 122. And then after a while, it will kind of go down. I've followed up with a cardiologist, which was my first time ever doing um, as a 39-year-old African-American female. Um, I haven't had any issues with blood pressure at all in the past. I've always ran great blood pressure numbers. Um, here recently, I started experiencing where I'm having a little bit of an increase in my high blood in, in my blood pressure. Mm -hmm. um, they're thinking that it may be related to me having like mild sleep apnea and then being overweight by 40 pounds. I'm mm -hmm. sure is probably contributing to mm -hmm. it. I've been heavier than that before. Right. Um, in June of 2023, I've I lost about 30 pounds, and so I have about 40 more to go. Nice. Um, 
but everything, all my cardiac workup came back fine. My stress test, my echo, right. everything. everything came back fine. Everything. Um, like I said, the, the sleep apnea showed mild. I've tried the CPAP machine, but it's, we're just not friends. Um, <laughs> I've tried different masks and I just get yeah. really bad congestion. Yeah. Um, I've started on some probiotics to kind of help my gut because I know if my gut is not okay, then other things can kind of go on as well. My career, I'm a RN, but Aww. I work from home. I'm a case oh, nice. manager. Nice. I work with um, Medicare population, just people nice. coming from um, out of the hospital and trying to get an coordination of care. Mm -hmm. um, life can be stressful at times, um, as life can be the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows. But other than that, I'm just trying to figure out what is causing yeah. the um the increase in my blood pressure and then some things I can do to um correct though correct that and kind of get ahead of that and if there's anything energetically that I need to do um I'm definitely open to it vitamin wise I'm open as well yeah um thank you for your time and I look forward to hearing hearing from you thank you thank you Zendra I love your voice by the way you have a great radio voice really good. So podcast, maybe in the future for you. And of course, um, thank you for the work that you do in the world. This could very well be related to hormones. So you're probably close to premenopause and pre premenopause can even start in the thirties. So what I would recommend, although you could see your MD, I would recommend finding a natural path. I know you live in Florida, so I'm not sure if Florida has licensed naturopathic physicians or not, but, or even a nurse practitioner who is familiar with, um, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm the names are escaping me in this moment, but compounded pharmacies and bioidentical hormones. If in case you need some, it might just be that you need some progesterone at night. Tachycardia is a common symptom that women experience during premenopause and menopause. It's not uncommon. There are so many symptoms that are, you know, the symptom pool for menopause is enormous. And unfortunately, because women's health notoriously around the world has not been studied as well as it could be, um, which is kind of shameful. That's why our doctors don't know that some of the symptoms that their patients are having is really menopausal. I had a friend who was having incredible depression and her doctors put her on all kinds of antidepressants, a little bit of antipsychotic meds. I kept telling her it was her hormones, even did a biopsy of her uterus when I can't even remember why that happened. And I said, please don't do that. Just go get some hormones. She finally got some hormones and everything went away everything went away. So I'm one of those people who have had tachycardia symptoms during um, perimenopause and menopausal times, not often, but I certainly had it. So that's what I'm suggesting. There is an herb formula that I like, and thankfully you're a nurse, so you can check it out or ask your own practitioners about it. Because I, I think that's important. You know, herbs can be powerful. They are powerful. And if we're taking any pharmacology, then um, we need to make sure that the herbs aren't going to interact with it. But HPA Adapt by Integrative Therapeutics is a wonderful formula with herbs that help support hormones. So that could be a great place to start. And then if you decide to do hormones, if you need to, please bioidentical from a compounded pharmacy because they're plant um, and they are based on plants. And so they have the less risk of causing cancers and other problems um, when we're using horse urine or other weird stuff that we use in modern medicine. Okay. Great question. I hope that um, you start to feel better very, very soon. Hi, Marie. I'm Bhavna from Mumbai, India. I have two questions to ask you. My first question is about my life's purpose. I would like to get some guidance on what the purpose for me is in this life and the second question is related to this i want to know about my career choice i'm at a stage in life where i've taken a break from my current career to study psychology i believe that being a counseling psychologist would align 
with what I believe my purpose in this life to be. Yeah. But the courses that I have applied for, there are two that I'm considering. The first course that is closer to my heart's desire is the one very expensive. Mm. And I'm not sure if I will be able to afford it. Mm. The second course, which is my second option, is the more practical choice. Right. But it doesn't seem as fulfilling to me. Is there any guidance that you can give me regarding making a decision between these two courses that are available for me? Thank you so much in advance. You're very, very welcome. And I'm excited for what you, what's next for you for this counseling, therapy, psychology career that you want to create. It kind of doesn't matter what program you choose. I agree that the more expensive one was, seems more interesting because what's really important is that you're going to need to study things that are not taught in educational systems typically that will actually help humans really heal. Like I would love it if you studied some energy medicine, hypnosis, um, tapping. So let's say you take the one that's more affordable, which is going to give you a nice degree from what I can see. And then on the summers or during your breaks, you take these other courses that you're going to utilize in your practice. Cause that's what people really need to heal. And unfortunately, psychology overall talks about emotions related to the brain. And I don't believe people feel from their brain. So in, actu in actuality, to help people heal, you have to recognize that their emotions come from their emotional response system. And most people, what they think they're feeling has nothing to do with what they're really feeling. So studying intuition, awareness, energy medicine, uh, those aspects, if you want to combine that with your psychology degree would be great. That's what I think anyway. Or you just give up the psychology and go study all these other things. <laughs> but it's, it's really fun also to have a degree that people recognize while you do all these add-ons um, so that when you go and help people, you have a larger toolbox rather than something that was shared through Freudian psychology, which you know should be removed from any university. Okay, I hope that's helpful. And thank you everyone for listening to today's show. I truly appreciate it. I'm going to go off and teach a class online. You can go to energyintuitive.com, leave a voicemail that I will eventually answer and check out my courses. I teach all the time. I love it. It's very fun. Joyful blessings, everyone. Bye-bye for now.